Hi and welcome to another inspired video. I'm Wilna Furstenberg and I'm so excited to be with you today. We're going to do the funnest page ever, if that's even a word. So without further ado, um, this is what we're going to make. So I designed these cute frames and they are inspired by last month's cut frames the grunge frames but i wanted something that is decorative on the bottom and on the top and and then i just designed these specifically for this page and you can find them in the two-piece store they will be available from today and what i did was i made two cuts out of each one and i'll show you why later and then I just want to show you some of the other cuts that's also available in the two-piece store that I made for um, for the silhouette. I think um, my thinking here was I wanted to make and I want to make things only that I would love and use consist consistently on my own pages. So these are like um, flourishes and it's spring and... I and I was thinking maybe we should get something happy and flourishing going. And then I made these three by four frames um, with flourishes and words. And these can be tucked into a pocket page or you can use them on a card. And the phrases that I created for this month has to do with children. And um, like I said to my husband, I wrote every single phrase with my youngest child in mind um, things that I would think consistently for her um, you know you will be fine you are funny you know oh the things you do oh my you know um, these are just words that that just really pertains to Yana on a very consistent basis so these are some of the phrases and um and if I can just tear them apart and what I do is when I design things for two peas I cut every single fr um, thing out with my silhouette to test it so um, I think you're a genius you just have to put in apostrophes you know um, I'm proud of you you right now your faves right now I think the great thing about these phrases are that they are um, applicable to children and especially to teenagers, seeming that that is what I had in mind when I wrote them. Right, so in making this page, I want to say right off the bat that what inspired me was the very first page that I created for Art Class 2 and uh, where I used um, paint, um, frames and rub-ons and Dear Lizzie made these beautiful rub-ons called Daydreamer and these are the ones that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the frames that I created and that's the reason why I created, the, created them. So start off by putting your frames right in the middle and you can see they are three different designs and now I'm just going to trace the inside of the frames with a pencil because I want to make sure that I place the rub-ons and the paint on the right spots. So I basically want to frame the frames with lovely color and my idea, I did use the mood board for um, March and the beautiful greens and pinks that came through there is definitely a big inspiration for the mood board. So I'm going to forward this because I'm cutting up the little, um, the rub-ons and just rubbing them down and it's really tedious to do. Plus, I'm working on the heavyweight cardstock by American Craft, which is my favorite cardstock to use. And this is the textured side. So it's hard work to rub down these rub-ons. It's very hard work we do in scrapbooking, don't you agree? Um, 
so you can see I'm cutting them up and just placing them and then the actual rubbing you have to put some some muscle in there so it's a good reason to go to the gym get a workout because rub-ons is really very very strenuous job to do and it's a trick because you have to keep the rub-ons secure so they don't um, move like those arrows you can see they moved and they didn't rub down perfectly but now uh, the other thing I'm, oh and remember to just use the right side as you can see there the heart rubbed I rubbed it the wrong way little play of words there so um, I wanted to say something um, oh it's not important to do it perfectly okay as with most of the pages that I make because we are going to really splatter paint all over this and I mean it's not really shouldn't surprise you rub-ons and paint has been one of my favorite combinations for a while and it's always my goal to use a whole sheet of rub-ons on a page because really if you just use one or two pieces of rub-ons you have to um, store them away so carefully and it's always a mess and I'm not that neat and conscientious about stuff like that so um, I, I just use all of them and then I don't feel bad right so placing the um, rub-ons and now I want to paint my title in it with the India ink that you can buy in the 2 piece shop now I want to talk to you about India ink so before I right now I'm thinking before I paint on my page maybe I should just test it on a piece of white and the brush is also by two piece in a bucket you can buy it there and it's lovely you can see how flowy it is and I think you should play with it uh, a little on a piece of paper and just try to um, figure out for yourself how it goes you know um, and how the brush strokes work and everything so play a little but why I love India ink is because you can paint with it on a page and it won't if you paint over it with a watercolor it won't flow so that's the reason why India ink is so amazing so I'm going to write the word yes and the reason why I'm just writing yes is because I wanted to write a short word. You can see there's not a lot of place on my page for a long word. I wanted to make it big and I did not want to write love because I've been writing love for the past eight years almost on every single page. So I decided to write yes because it's a funny thing in our house. Um, I try to say yes more than I say more than saying no and as a mum with three teenage girls it's not always easy I um, it's a conscious effort for me to say yes and to create situations where I can say yes instead of no so that's a little bit of my thinking behind a word and once your India ink is tack dry but really dry to the touch dry to as dry as possible the driest dry you can dry it with you're gonna take your gouache and the reason why I'm doing this is because um, it's something that two piece sells and I love using medium and things that it's available that you can buy now gouache is amazing in fact I actually forgot how amazing it was until I got this set from Two Piece in a Bucket. And what gouache is, is gouache is um, watercolors that is super opaque. It's not like acrylic paint, it doesn't have any latex in it. Acrylic paint, when it dries, you cannot work with it again, you can't use it again because the latex in it creates a layer that even if you add water to acrylic paint you can't solve it again it's it's really lost but with watercolors and gouache 
gouache you can um it can dry and you can add more water to it and it will work again so but gouache is more opaque so the colors are stronger that's a very simple way to explain it and that's the reason why i'm using so much white so i'm using going to use four colors lots of white and then i'm going to add a touch of color to the white as you can see there and you can see how little color i'm adding at first later on i might add a little bit more color on the mood board there is this beautiful lime green and i'm going to make that lime green with that beautiful green plus a bit of yellow and then i'm going to use green more green which with the white is going to be a mint green which is going to be beautiful so this is basically how the four colors i'm using and you have to just make sure that your water is clean and your brush is clean and then you're going to start mixing up your paint so um you can see I'm cleaning my brush before I'm moving on to the next paint and this one was a little yellow so I did add a little bit touch of green to that to make it more lime green and instead of a uh, yellow green and again just a touch of paint I'm so sorry this is not tack sharp in focus I did use a new lens for this um, video so I love these um, big tip paint brushes it's almost like a Chinese paintbrush they're very floppy but such happy paint brushes and I got three of them in size 2, 4 and 6 so this is the I think size four and then mixing that one up is like a little apricot and I'm just going to add a touch of the red to make it a tad more pink and then there you go there's the pink when you add red and white so you can see the colors are muted they've they almost like pastels even though in the end product they don't look very pastel and that's what I love about gouache is you will see how opaque these colors are and they're very strong once you put them on a white paper right so if you're ready to start um, painting again I'm just double checking that the black is dry otherwise it will mix into the color and my basic um, prerogative is that I'm going to use one color and dry it and moving on to the next color. So I'm adding some white, uh, oh, sorry, not white, water to my first pink. And you can see I'm going to lay it down. You can see how strong the color is. It's almost like acrylic paint with um, in, in almost in the op opacity. So now I'm adding more water and then I'm going to just lift my page and with the embossing heat gun you want to let it flow so that's the whole goal now you will see how oddly water based paint behave with rub-ons and that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love working with paint and rub-ons you can see how it literally went around that little cat's head the paint splatter so it's beautiful how the rub-ons comes through they resist the paint and that my friends is the very reason why the two of them go together so well so I'm adding a little bit more water and when you splatter like that with the with while adding your heat gun it splatters so that's quite cool you can see how so I want to make another little leg going there it goes so this you want to let it dry completely and then we will be moving on to the next color I'm just going to forward 
the video and because basically I'm doing the same thing just want to add a, make it a little pink more pink and I'm adding a little more sorry my tongue twisted I'm adding a little bit more water and I just want to want to let it flow now if you're super um, scared to do this on a page with your rub ons on it I suggest that you practice a little just on a white piece of paper like I've said numerous times, white paper is the cheapest kind of canvas that you can buy. And just get a pack of plain white cardstock and just paint on it, test it, try to make your colors um, will, um, flow like I did there. And it's just a question of practicing. I'm telling you, when you look at the final page, um, and you might think there's no way that I can make something like this and when you see the process of it you would you can totally make it it's really no there's no rocket science in it it's it's just the rub-ons the paint and making the paint flow with embossing tool and that's really how simple it is so I would love for you to try this technique um, this is why I want the colors to be dry. You can see that pink is not 100% dry. And yes, you can use your paintbrush to help with the direction of the paint. And then once this one is dry, you want to use your green. So I'm going to add a touch more green to it. And um, that beautiful mint green, isn't it beautiful? And again, how it just resists the rub-ons. And I just love it. So this page is super, super busy. And that's why I decided to keep my frames white. I wanted to um, paint them, but in the end I didn't. I just wanted to keep them white and I cut them out of a 300 gram paper so it's a super thick paper and I did it um, I told my silhouette to cut twice so double cut everything and then I made two cuts of every frame so you will see now I'm gonna adhere it because I wanted something that is really thick and substantial that's what I was thinking so this is more or less um, how I wanted to to look and now to just to complete that look I just want to paint um, my frames with Mod Podge and stick them together so this is what we're going to do next right I'm gonna keep this very simple I'm just going to um, use a paintbrush and paint Mod Podge on one side and then just stick them together. I'm not using too much Mod Podge. I'm not too worried if there's bits that's not stuck together perfectly. In fact, in the end, I love how it worked out because it looked three dimensional, which is what I wanted. So the paper that I use to cut is called Mixed Media Strathmore is the name of the brand. Mixed Media Vellum Surface and um, there's 12 sheets in a pack. It's 11 inches by 14 inches and it's 140 pounds or 300 grams per square meter so it's a very thick pay, um, paper but I love the vellum surface and what vellum surface means it's just so smooth so I love using this on my silhouette I think important to note is that your blade must be really sharp relatively new and your cutting mat should also be not too old um, I've come to realize that most of the times that we don't get clean cuts with our silhouette is because um, either the cutting mat is not tacky enough or the blade is too old. 
so I because I cut so much I try to change those out as soon as I see that my cut is not so perfect anymore and I'm telling you these came off beautifully they they cut really like a like a charm but I did set my settings on double cut so um, I had someone test uh, SVG files that all my cuts comes with SVG files for the Cricut Express um, expression oh I'm not sure maybe I had it wrong but for the other die cut systems um, it works it works well so um, you can see how I'm just carefully and I'm very cautious not to make it dirty the frame I wanted to keep it as white as possible I'm just adhering them together and now I'm just going to wash my hands because again I don't want to make the frames dirty so I have these three photos of my girls and I did these um, photo shoots with them uh, for the mini the love mini class that I did for the projects I needed photos so I haven't shown these photos of them in public pa pages but they're gonna start showing up now right so in the middle of my page I'm just using a few strips of paper um, I have this lime green it's from the Finley Finley connection by Glitz and so I'm going to put that on the edges and the other papers are by Dear Lizzie and by Maggie Holmes. So I'm going to just stack them together and create a strip of paper in the middle. Right and what you can't see now is I'm just using my um, stapler and I'm just stapling them together, the mini attacher. Because right where the little staples are is where you won't be able to see the, it's going to be covered with the frames. So I'm just stapling them together and then the middle piece and the text piece. The papers for some reason gives this whole page a cohesive look and I love how it calms it and and. It, it just I don't know I just love the look of the papers and you can see without it hearing it I'm just testing it first to see uh, if I'm really going going to like it and in the end I did so I love the look and to me the double the frames that I adhere together make to make them double really made a big difference now because of all the water on this paper it's a little buckled I don't know if you have noticed that but I'm going to show you and if you've watched my videos you know exactly how to adhere a buckled page to a background but perhaps this is your first video of mine that you've watched and um, so I'm just going to show you I'm looking for a background I trimmed that white piece with the paint on it a little smaller with my making memories paper trimmer and in the end I decided to go with this background by uh, Amy Tangerine plus one and I'm just going to use tape and just every single inch or half an inch I'm going to put a strip of tape and I know this is a little indulgent but in the end it stretches out your page page beautifully also when you um, do it from side to side so so I'm putting it down on one side and working my way over and just stretching it out as good as I can And I'm just going to add the middle strips and then I'm going to add the little frames with pop dots. So I'm putting a little bit of tape on the photo 
because there's no place behind the frame to use some washi tape or anything like that. So I'm just using a touch of it on the photo itself and it's remarkable how good it worked. So I'm just forwarding the video a little um, and in the end I'm going to stack the photos in the order of the ages so small middle large or small middle I don't know or maybe I should say uh, naughtiest naughtier no naughtiest naughtier and naughty I don't know not that my children are naughty but that's Yana the one with the polka dots she's the inspiration for all the words and she's 12 and she's amazing I have amazing kids so I'm using pop dots to make them pop a little more um, just get them off that very busy background even though the frames are busy I think it really calms things with the negative space in the white and I could not be more happy with this page I absolutely loved it when my girls saw it they really squealed with the light they thought it was so cute and honestly it looks like a very complicated page to make but I think if you follow the process and you see how simple it is and the only advice I would give you is if you feel uncomfortable in any of the processes with the paint or the words just go ahead and um, practice on a piece of paper and and then just go for it uh, I mean it's really not that big a deal if you make a little mistake keep a paper towel handy and just dab as much of the paint as possible so in the end I did um, suture I, I stitched around the edges with my sewing machine I added some journaling and you can see that in the final photographs of um, this page you can like I said buy the frames in the two-piece store and there you can see how lovely and dimensional the page is I went with black and white photos just because of the colorful pages thank you so much for watching uh, this video inspired video and I will see you next month bye